Sports Sports Army, where you at? Your motivation guy is back. I'm so pumped up, man. This is your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, man. This is the guy that is motivating you to be the best player you can be and also really the best person you can be. I really do believe in you, and I always say this. It's been a while since I've said this, but I am your number one fan. So keep your head up and let nothing get you down. Stay positive, man, no matter what. Today, man, the long-awaited new season is finally here. I mean, with the SMGs remaining untouched and as strong as ever, you guys need to make sure that your settings are on par if you guys want to shred through all your opponents and be on the top of your game in this new meta, all right? So in today's video, we're going to be showing you guys the best controller settings to dominate your competition in Fortnite Chapter 3 Season 2. But before we do, man, uh, you know, it's time to do our tradition. It's time to sit back, relax, and get some of my favorite candy. What is it, y'all? Say it loud, man. It's that bunch of crunch. Yo, let's get this going. All right, so before we show you guys the best sensitivities for the new season, we need to talk about the differences between each input option. All right, once you enable the advanced sensitivity setting, you're gonna have the choice between linear and exponential. This setting basically controls how your joystick input affects your sensitivity and the way in which you aim. You know, many players seem to think that one of these settings is just blatantly better than the other, but uh, that's just kind of far from the case, man. You know, ever since these input settings became available in 2019, I mean, heaps of controller pros have played on each setting and have seen success using both input options, really. So each input offers its own strengths and weaknesses, both positives and negatives. So it really just comes down to your own personal play style and what skills you prioritize as a player. So we're gonna be going over linear and exponential just to see what works best for you. Once these settings were initially released, an overwhelming majority of the controller community argued that linear was the way to go. But after seeing some of the top players find success using exponential, the community developed into more of a split. So the strong point of exponential was definitely the close range aiming abilities. You know, it just seems to offer more aim assist when face to face with an opponent when compared to linear and overall seems to be easier to really aim with. But this comes with a cost, like the medium and long range aim assist with exponential seems to be almost non-existent. I mean, this could be a huge deal breaker for competitive players, especially when you're looking for those long range storm surge damage tags. Okay, so another thing that you should know about exponential is that it requires some excellent joystick control if you guys want to have clean and consistent mechanic. Many players claim that building and editing on exponential feels like you're dragging your joysticks through mud and generally feels delayed and slow. Of course, this doesn't seem to be a huge issue as one of the best mechanical controller players in the world, Reed, has been dominating on this input for a long time. Unlike exponential, linear's aiming strong point seems to be at the medium and long range. You know, with the proper ADS settings, you can absolutely fry your opponents when nearby while also being able to land those long range tap fire shots. Another thing about linear is that it is generally the better option if you guys are a player who prioritizes your mechanics. In contrast to exponential though, linear has a very smooth and consistent feel to it when building and editing. And so this just makes it much easier to consistently perform the moves you want without messing up your crosshair placement or experiencing any slowdowns. All right, so with all that being said, really it's just up to you to decide which input option works best for you. You should definitely give both linear and exponential a chance. Like you may feel surprised by which one you like more. Like we mentioned, man, like there isn't one input that really dominates the other. Like it's gonna vary from one player Player to another player and what they prioritize when playing the game. All right, Bunch of Army, it's time for the question of the day. All right, now that we've been talking about input settings in your own experience, which do you think is better, exponential or linear? Let us know which one you guys prefer and uh, we'll definitely check out your comments below. All right, so now that we got all that out the way, we can finally hop into the part that most of you guys have been waiting for. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, sensitivity. Just like when comparing exponential and linear, there isn't one sensitivity that's going to magically just turn you into a pro. Sorry, it doesn't exist. But sensitivity is just very heavily in the pro scene, as we've seen players use anything from 35% all the way up into the 70s. But a majority of the top players that we're seeing today are sticking to the 40 to 50% area. We personally recommend something like a 44% X and Y for linear and a 52% X and Y for exponential. These sensitivities are on the slower side, meaning you can hit your close range shots pretty easily while still feeling comfortable turning around. Unless you have some insane joystick control, there's really not too much of a point to really raise this any higher. It's just gonna simply cause you to over flick and just miss easy shots. Not to mention that you can just compensate for building and editing by raising your build and edit mode multipliers, but we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. All right, so you guys wanna be on the top of your game this new season, make sure to head on over to proguys.com. I tell you this all the time. You know why? Because we've got an army of pro coaches ready and waiting to teach you everything that you need to know about Fortnite. So you guys can improve super fast. 
All right, so now that we've talked about your look sensitivities, let's make sure your ADS or aim down sight sensitivity is where it should be. All right, so with the return of shockwaves and slip streams this season, players are gonna be moving around the map quickly. And so this means that you need to have enough control of your ADS to the point where you can just track quickly moving players mid-air while still having some precision in your aim. All right, so we're gonna be recommending a vertical and horizontal speed of 12 to 14%. A sensitivity in this area is gonna be high enough for you guys not to lose track of players in mid-air while still being slow enough to beam opponents who are on the ground. Of course, you should still feel free to really try some sensitivities outside of this range, but just don't make the mistake of just setting it too low or too high to prioritize specific aiming situations, all right? A great way to find a good ADS sensitivity for yourself is just by hopping into an aim training map like Skavox or Raider 464's aim map. I say this all the time on my Instagram. You know, start off with something like 13% X and Y and just run some medium and long range aim drills. Get a feel for how accurate you are, then either increase or decrease the sensitivity to you find the perfect sweet spot, all right? So now we're gonna be going over your build and edit more multipliers like we promised we would. We don't break promises. All right, like we mentioned previously, these multipliers will be used to compensate for the lower sensitivity that we recommended earlier. All right, so this is gonna come down to personal preference, but we do recommend staying between two and 2.3X for both build and edit mode. This area seems to be like the most popular amongst the pros and it's definitely gonna allow you guys to build and edit quickly while still being accurate and consistent. You know, some players who prefer to play more smooth and controlled will hover around 1.8, uh, 1.9, but you know, this can just get you guys in trouble uh, when you get beamed from behind and you aren't able to turn around quick enough. On the other hand, these are some players out there who are going to go all the way into the threes, 3.0 for a more keyboard and mouse like play style. But this is extremely hard to control and it's likely going to cause you guys to experience some joystick drift, which is something that we want to avoid at all costs. Uh, speaking of joystick drift, we're now gonna talk about dead zone, my favorite. You know, something heavily overlooked when deciding on your settings. Your dead zone is basically an imaginary circle diameter around your joystick. Your joystick movement is only gonna register once the joystick breaks the defined dead zone area. The higher your dead zone is, the larger this circle becomes. This means that minor joystick movements are not gonna be registered. On the other hand, when you have your dead side set on the lower side, minor joystick movements are gonna be registered and it's gonna be sensitive to any input you make. Okay, so general rule of thumb, when deciding on a dead zone is to set it as low as you can without experiencing any joystick drift. Seven or eight percent dead zone for your left and your right stick is gonna allow you guys to make minor micro movements without it being too sensitive. If you find yourself getting drift on a sub 10 dead zone, raise it up until you get, raise it up until you don't get any. All right, so to wrap up today's settings video, we're gonna be going over the differences between playing with paddles and a claw grip. There's nothing wrong with playing on a standard controller with a relaxed grip, but a certain point, man, you're gonna be held back from improving. And this is due to you not being able to just move your right joystick while hitting your buttons at the same time. And this is seriously gonna mess you up while performing advanced moves or even basic 90s. So to avoid this, all right, players will either switch to a claw grip or a controller with paddles. A claw grip is where you hit your buttons with your point finger and your trigger with your middle finger. This works, but it can just be pretty uncomfortable to really play with. On the other hand, using controller with paddles, it's gonna allow you guys to play in a relaxed position while still having optimal bind. Both these options offer the same ability, so it's really up to you guys on which one you guys wanna try out. But we personally recommend trying out paddles as this is just much easier in your hands and it really gets the same job done. But Squirt Army, where you at? Your motivation guy is back. Man, I hope you guys enjoyed this video because I did apply these, man, so you can take your game to the next level. Connect with my Instagram at your motivation guy. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Also, feel free to leave a comment and just let us know what you guys want to learn more about. We hope that this video cleared up any confusion that you had and just really just make the tweaks necessary for your performance, all right? Keep your head up. Don't let nothing get you down. Stay with a smile on your face. Hey, man, life's too short, man. We got we to enjoy each and every day, man. Make it the best that you can make it. Hey, why don't you try encouraging someone else today? You know, put a smile on someone else's face, man. That's what really uh, just helps us be the best human beings we can. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.